I got every workout from 1983 until 1997. Every single workout, every rep, every set. Preparation notes for Mr. Olympia and all these things. This worked, this didn't work. So very analytical, writing everything, analyzing, studying. His training diary was his life, and that was him. He knew if he followed X, it would equal Y, and, it, and that's what's been proven. He totally believed what he was doing was right. He had no doubts. That's half the battle. If you believe in something, you, you can make it happen. Blood and guts is just to the level where no one's willing to go. I mean, that's, that's what it's about. Turn the body inside out, no matter what it takes. He wasn't going to stop. He was a train. I was never going to be a men's physique. Didn't have much of an off season. I like his physique better. I'm always very energetic. I will have to put me as one of the greatest. Mr. Olympia was won by the back. Can you break this down a little bit more? So, I, and Dorian was the that was high. It was hit. It's called hit, right? High intensity training. So, just for those for those who don't know, that's basically when you do uh, heavy weight but short amount of reps and sets, right? Can you can you give me an example exactly what what that means? Well, Dorian's, Dorian's workouts and volume was so low that no one believed that that's what he was doing. He claimed at one point that he was training like three days a week or something like that. It's basically instead of doing five or six exercises, like nowadays I see guys doing six or seven exercises, four sets, 10 to 12 reps per muscle group. Dorian was doing like three movements, two to four movements. I'm not two, but maybe three or four movements only a couple working sets. So he might do like four or five sets, but he wouldn't count all of them as sets. He would only do two or three heavy working sets. I also implemented another style of training that I learned early on where it was four to six reps and literally two exercises for small muscles, three for bigger muscles. That's it. But people have to understand whenever someone try the human body, if you're a mammal and you're a human, this works. So when people say this doesn't work for me, I, I, I don't agree. This works for all human beings. It's scientifically proven that sprinting, boxing, explosive movements will burn more fat than walking. It's scientifically proven that lifting really heavy weight for one or two reps will induce the most amount of muscle growth. Okay. These are things that are proven. Um, but a lot of people say it doesn't work for them. In my opinion, is because they don't have the capacity, the mental or physical capacity to train at that intensity. Dorian didn't talk to guys in the gym and text and take pictures and worry about making content. Listen, I don't care how hard you train. Even if you have your training partner filming you in the gym, it's 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 distracting, man. It just is is distracting. I'm a bodybuilder in the 20th set, you know, like in the 20th century, obviously, but like in 2021 now, and the social media is a big part, we have to document our training. Listen, it's it's just different. The, the, the level of intensity is different. Like I used to train back in the day alone with music in a quiet gym. It's a different level of intensity. So yeah, so Dorian's training was very, very low volume and lots of rest and lots of food. Basically, what happens is a lot of guys nowadays, let's just assume everyone's eating and sleeping the right amount, which they're not, right? A lot of guys, a lot of younger guys listening that aren't pro bodybuilders, listen, you guys aren't sleeping enough. You're partying here and there, and you're not eating enough. So I'm not even, I'm not even talking about those guys. Let's say everyone is eating and sleeping the same amount. What's happening is guys are overtraining. And I know a lot of hardcore guys, Rich Piana, God rest his soul. I love Rich. But, you know, he used to say like overtraining is that, you know, there's no such thing. There, Unfortunately, there is. You know, there is. You can overtrain. If you train too much, too long, there's a, there's a, a part of a, 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 you, you basically, it's like risk versus reward, right? Diminishing returns. There's a point of diminishing returns where you're just breaking down, breaking down, breaking down. And you're not allowing yourself to rebuild. So it can stunt your growth. It can stunt your gains. So what Dorian was doing is was he was hammering a muscle. He was stimulating it for growth and then just backing off and letting it rest. When I train with maximum intensity and I kill a muscle, I'm sore for four days, five days. I'm talking about sore to the touch. And Dorian used to say jokingly, like he wouldn't be able to sit on the toilet, not even jokingly, he was serious. After training legs, he couldn't sit on the toilet for several mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. So can you give me an example of the high intensity, like chest training? So you go to the gym, right? You, you do two chest exercises, 
and you do like literally like what, like three reps? So there's a lot of different ways of doing it. I personally, for chess, I do flat incline and flies. I'll warm up a lot. So if I do like flat, for instance, I'll warm up two, sometimes three sets. Okay. Now the warm up weight is 50, 60% of my working weight. And instead of pyramiding up in weight, because a lot of guys will go 100, 110, 120, 130. And what happens is with every set, you're getting weaker. And if you're doing this every week, the only weight that's really going to get you to truly grow is your last set, the heaviest one, because it's a new stimulus. We don't grow because we're lifting 100 pounds. We grow when we push our body to or close to failure. We grow when we provide a new stimulus. So if you're doing the same shit every week, you're not going to grow. So I'm not saying pyramid's bad, but when you pyramid, you're weakening yourself every set. So what I did and what Dorian used to do is you'd warm up You'd get yourself ready. You'd acclimate. Maybe do a weight that's 80% of your, your, your working weight, maybe for one or two reps to get your nervous system ready. And then you take that heavy weight, whatever the max weight is for four, six, eight, whatever your rep range is, and you just stay with that weight. That's how I trained for about over 10 years. So it's very, very heavy and a lot less volume. Now, if you want to talk about three or four reps versus 10 reps, there's you can do both. You can do much lower reps. But the point is we're not doing seven exercises. Guys nowadays do six, seven exercises for back and legs. It's overkill. There's been days where I, I did one or two exercises for my quads and I couldn't walk for a week. What difference does it make? If you, if you do one exercise that's stimulating the muscle and it feels good, just stay on that exercise and do 15 sets. But everyone thinks they have to do like so many different exercises to, to build a muscle. It's not, look, in life in general, in your career, in your job, but especially in bodybuilding, it's not what you do that's important. It's how you do it. So everybody asks George Peterson what he just does for back. Everybody asks Arnold what he did for chest. Bro, besides all these fancy exception workouts, like hanging upside down with chains. There's only a few exercises for every body part, right? There aren't that many. We all do the same shit. Incline, decline, flat, flies, cables, me, Arnold, Ronnie, Dorian, George, we all do the same. It's how you do it. Just doing Arnold's chest workout is not going to get you looking like Arnold. It's the, the control and the intensity. That's what the younger guys are missing. They're looking for the best rep range. There's no such thing. They're looking for the best routine. There's no such thing. Slow, slow the reps down, squeeze hard, push yourself mentally. And that's how you really make gains.